Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatron is speaking. This is going to be a video on Claire sentience or clear feeling. I made this video, ooh, I don't know, like a week or two ago. Um, but, e but I either forgot to put my mic on or I don't know, something happened. The audio was really messed up. I didn't even know it because I never listened to my own videos. I'm one of those people who doesn't like the sound of my own voice, so I never, I never actually watch my own videos. I just watch them long enough to edit them and get them out to everybody. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to redo the video. The way I normally prepare for my videos um, is that I will channel notes on my phone, and then I'll use those to kind of be my speaking points or to read verbatim from, depending on what the situation is. Well, since I did the video already, I deleted my notes, so I don't have my notes. Um, so, <laughs> so I kind of wrote some stuff down, so this video is probably going to be slightly different than the other video. Um, but of course, if you didn't see the first video or if you couldn't hear the first video, then I guess this is still going to be useful. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> it's still going to be useful for everybody. So. Um, I also, if you guys don't know, I also uh, write on Medium, which is a, a website just for people who write. And so I'll oftentimes will post in writing very, very similar, nearly identical messages to what I do on video. Um, so I, Claire Sentience is one of the ones that I posted on Medium. So I took screenshots. It's so bad. I took screenshots of what I wrote. So I'm going to try to use that as my notes, even though it's not as complete as a video. I always talk, say a lot more in a video than I do when I'm writing. Um, so clairsentience, let's talk about this because you're probably clairsentient. There's probably traits that indicate that you're clairsentient that you didn't even realize. So let's talk about those. So clairsentience is clear feeling. So the most famous way people associate being clairsentient is by feeling emotions from other people. That's the big one, right? So let's talk about that. So if you've ever had an emotional reaction that was really strong and, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, who you're around, whether you're around people or not, if you ever had an emotional reaction to something, it's really strong and your brain is kind of like, oh, I didn't know I felt so strongly about this, but your body is just reacting. Um, so that can be a sign that you are feeling someone else's emotions because, yeah, because I'm saying, I'm saying this very definitively. It may or may not be, but I'm saying definitively here. It's because it's not your emotion. It's someone else's emotion, but it feels just like yours. If your thoughts don't match up with your emotion, the emotion isn't yours. And so with people who have any amount of clear sentience, this is dead on how it works for them. So whose emotion is it if it's not yours, right? So we have a couple different options. It could be a physical person's emotion. So somebody else who is in the room with you, it could, I mean, if you're really clairsentient, it can be somebody else that is somewhere completely else in the world from you. Like people who, um, who are really in tune with their twin and they can feel what their twin is feeling, even if they're in a different country or whatever the case may be. Um, you can also pick up on the emotions of someone who is departed. So a departed soul. And most of us can't see them. So you wouldn't even necessarily know they were there otherwise. Um, but if they're within your energy field, which remember is that 3D aura that we all have that's much bigger than our physical bodies. So if they were to start getting closer to your energy field so that you could start picking up on them, remember emotion is a vibration. It's a frequency, right? That's all we all are. We're just a bunch of vibrating 
particles, I guess, um, we're just a bunch of frequencies. So if their frequency comes into yours, it starts to mix with yours, it starts to impact yours, and you start to tune into, oh, that's the vibration of sadness. I feel sad. And your your brain isn't expecting that to happen. So you just assume it's your sadness. Um, I oftentimes pick up on the emotions of my guides because they are always in very close proximity to me. Um, so with my guides, kind of crazy, with my guides, we'll be talking about something and then all of a sudden I'll be like, <gasps> It'll, and I'll just like start crying and I'm not really a big crier. So <laughs> every time it happens, I'll, I'll ask them, uh, is this, are you crying? Am I crying or are you crying? And <laughs> they'll have to tell me. And uh, at least half the time it's them and it's not me. And so it doesn't feel any different. It feels exactly like me because I feel sad and I am reacting in a sad way. The only difference is that my thoughts aren't matching up. My thoughts aren't going, oh my gosh, this is so, that was so loving or that was so horrible. Or that was like, there's always a narrative that your brain tells you to go along with your emotions. And normally it's your brain doing the narrative first and then your emotions catch up. If your brain was just minding its own business and you suddenly have an emotion, probably not yours. Um, so clear sentience can also show up in other ways. So not just picking up on other people's emotions. Sometimes it's picking up on energy in a room. So if you've ever walked into a room and this can go both ways. Normally, it's more memorable if you've ever walked into a room and felt, quote, bad energy or low vibrational energy. Normally, that is more memorable because you walk in and you're kind of like, ooh, I, I just really want to get out of here. Something doesn't feel right. I'm kind of creeped out. I'm kind of, it, it feels like, like for me, it almost feels like my skin is crawling. Or like I want to go take a shower or something. Like there's something I just want to get off of me. And so that's me. That's how I interpret it. But so you can walk into a room. You could feel that low vibrational energy. You could walk into a room where you're just like, oh, this has like such good, light, calm, peaceful energy. You could feel it either way. So what are people actually feeling when they pick up on bad energy? Let's start there. Couple different things. If you walk into a room and things don't feel right, one, you might be picking up on human beings that are in that room right at that moment, right? There might be human beings in there that either are, well, I'm gonna say they're a low vibration, but if you're a low vibration, you almost always have, unfortunately, demonic attachments or demons that are within your energy field that are impacting you, that are trying to keep you in that low vibration. Um, so you could be sensing those presences. You could be sensing, um, if there's nobody in the room, you could be sensing low vibrational departed souls or demons that are not attached to a human being. Um, you could be sensing a portal that isn't, and that's, if there's a portal there, normally you can tell. I mean, I guess it depends on everyone's sensitivity, right? But a portal, let's say you have two rooms and one room has two demons in it and one room has two demons in a portal. You can normally tell that that extra portal, you can feel that difference normally. But I guess it depends on how sensitive you are. So I, sh I shouldn't say you necessarily could tell. Um, so when you walk into a room, let's say there's nobody there. Let's say there's no low vibrational energies there, but you're picking up on something that doesn't feel quite right. So something, I don't know, you may be aware of this, you may not. Energy very easily imprints onto other energy, obviously, right? Because we were talking about dead people imprinting their energy onto us. I'm not really imprinting, but impacting our energy. So if you're not a, quote, living thing, if you are, let's say, let me start over. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell a story, but I'm getting all mixed up in my words. Let's say you walk into a room, there's nobody in there, the vibration feels low. What you could be picking up on is a low vibrational event 
that previously occurred in that space that imprinted either on the furniture in the room, especially wood furniture. I don't know why, but if you have wooden furniture, that really absorbs energy a lot more than something that's metal. Um, or it could be imprinted into like the air or like the the air itself in the room. So you can feel this more so, um, like sometimes you can feel it if you walk into a hotel room, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, but somebody could have just had like a really bad argument and it imprints on the furniture. Um, in really horrific cases, it is something much worse than an argument that occurred in that space and the trauma of that event has imprinted around. So just, I'm just going to throw this out there. Just in general, it is a really good idea to clear the energy from your space semi-frequently. You don't have to do it every day, but man, you will notice a difference if once a week you decide to burn a little sage, burn a little Palo Santo, something along those lines, and just walk through your house and just ask, well, not really ask, but tell all the vibrational energies that they are not welcome there. And just doing the perimeter of the inside of your home. I guess you could do the outside, but I always do the inside. But you will feel a difference. It doesn't matter if you're like, hey, we're like this normal family. And yeah, sometimes we argue, but not really that bad. When you do that, you'll notice a difference because just naturally we have energies that come in and out of our home, that connect to our personal energy. And when you clear it all out, it feels amazing. So I'm just going to throw that out there. If you ever walk into a room in your home and it makes you feel uncomfortable, please go on my website and contact me. I know this isn't a very common thing, but it happens more than you would think. So if you there's something about a room in your home where you're like, oh, I kind of get the creeps or I kind of always see shadows moving over there or something along those lines. You have a situation where you need a professional to just come in and clear it out for you. Because there's probably if you do the sage, it'll probably fix it for a day, less than a day, depending on how bad it is. You need a professional to go in there and close portals and do other things that sage can't do for you, basically. All right, let's see if I can pull up my notes. Um, I'm actually sticking to my notes pretty well for not reading them. I'm very impressed with myself right now. Okay, back to clairsentience. So you can feel other people's emotions, possibly. You can decipher what kind of energy is in a room, possibly. So here's one you may have not thought of. If having a cluttered or messy space impacts your ability to think or focus. Ooh, oh my gosh, me. This is me. I, I don't know what it is. Well, I guess I'll explain what it is. But if, if there's a lot of, if a place is messy, I cannot relax until it's tidied. And I'm not like a neat freak. It's just there's got to be a certain degree of not having chaos because otherwise I just sit down and I I feel the disorder energy from the items in the room. So if you're somebody like this, a couple different options, right? So one, the problem might be that well, everything has energy, right? All your belongings have energy. All your belongings have an energy field. And all your belongings potentially have an imprint on them from somebody who argued or, you know, whatever the case may be. So there's all kinds of different energies in any standard room, right? Um, so if you're a person who can pick up on all these different energies, you may want to consider changing your lifestyle. You may want to consider something like, um, like a minimalist type decorating scheme 
Because if you have less things, there is less energy in the room competing for your attention. You might feel more at peace and at, you know, just calmer. So that's a p- potential thing. Um, And now I don't know what my notes said, so I have to check them. Oh. The other thing that you might just have to do a lot, if you're a person like that, you might just have to keep the place reasonably tidy to keep your sanity. But just, I thought it was interesting to note that if you are impacted by how many objects you have or the placement of the objects in your space, that can be clairsentience. Another way clairsentience shows up is you physically feel other people's pain. So this one is a pain, literally. Ooh. I'm getting another attack. That's crazy. I had another video this week. Okay, hold on, let me clear this. Had another video this week where while I was recording the video, I had an attack. And this is the exact same kind of attack. It feels like it's less. I hope it's less. It's pressure down on the crown of the head and it's um goes right here in the eyes and you can tell it's messing with my ability to speak a little bit so it's not really my speaking my thinking is what it messes with so it kind of gives you a foggy brain so I asked Michael to come clear them and you saw my head kind of move to the side that's Michael moving my head to the side and then he kind of he pulls whatever it is out, and he says they're all gone. And he says we're all good to go, so I'm going to try to focus because now I have, I'll still have the um, the foggy headedness, and sometimes it messes with my actual connection to my guides. So I'll have that for a eh, couple hours. In the in really bad cases, it stays. This shouldn't be too long. Okay, so I'm going to focus. Okay, so we're talking about feeling other people's pain. So if you find it difficult to watch the news or watch violent movies, that is clairsentience. Um, So you're identifying with the way the energy of the news or the energy of the movie makes you feel. And it makes you, if it makes you physically, like for me, it makes me physically uncomfortable. If I'm watching a violent movie, I'm like squirming. I, I don't watch violent movies. If I see any kind of, almost any kind of violence, anything that's gory for sure, I, I can't handle it whatsoever. And it's because you feel the suffering, that you feel, you physically feel the suffering that you're watching. Um, So some people can actually take on the physical symptoms of the people around them. So if someone around them has like a headache or a stomach ache, then they get it too. And so that is kind of the, that's kind of the, I think the way most people think of uh, um, the definition of an empath. I'm sorry, guys, my thoughts are cloudy. So it's like the words are coming out slow. Um, It's so funny that I had the technical issues on this video and now I'm having an attack during this video. I would not, if I had to guess, I would not think that the Claire Sentience video was like a really crucial message to get out to others, um, especially since I'm just kind of talking about identifying it. I'm not like teaching people how to be that way necessarily, but I don't know. Sometimes I just get a lot of attacks just because they... They just want to mess with me and slow me down a little bit, I guess. Um, so, I'm, ass- I'm assuming some of these examples 
of clairsentience are surprising to you. They surprised me, actually, when I was preparing for this. Um, and I'm, I think that pretty much everyone who watches this will probably identify with at least one of these as being true to them. Maybe several of them. We all have different degrees of this ability, and we can all improve any psychic gift to the extent that we are motivated to develop it. So we all have access to all psychic gifts. Maybe this is what they don't need to say, right? We all have access to all psychic gifts. This is not like back in the day where you had to be, you know, born speaking to the dead people. You had to be born psychic. Nope. You want a psychic gift? You really want to do that? You can teach yourself. You can learn. You can practice. You have to practice. Have to practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, and it just expands the gift and makes it easier to use. But these are all open to all of us. If you are somebody who feels like you don't have a psychic gift, but you would like to start tapping into one, there are activations on my website that can help with that. I specifically have a light worker activation that is designed to tap you into your gifts. I have other activations like angel activations or like Metatron activation where those are designed to connect you to channeling or communicating with either the angels, either all of the archangels or just Metatron specifically. Um, and those may give you psychic gifts, but the light worker activation is designed for it because light workers need their extrasensory abilities for lots of different purposes, depending on what you're doing, right? So if that's something you're interested in, you can reach out to me. I can see if Metatron is recommending that service for you at that time. Sometimes he might come back and say, hey, this person has a lot of trauma. They would benefit from doing an Akashic Records reading to release some trauma first, or they would benefit from doing a healing first and then doing this activation. So he he will give me that information. I can share it with you. Obviously, it's ultimately up to the person what they want to do, what they're comfortable with. But it's nice to have an archangel weigh in on what they view as being the most beneficial for your for your specific pathway. Because it's not a one size fits all. We're all unique. Um so yes, so if you're interested in that, you can go to my website. It's orangelightenergy.com. I will put the name in the description. If you have any questions on something that you pick up on, something that you sense, and you're wondering, huh, is this clairsentience? Put it in the comments. I will check with Metatron. I will give you my, my best answer on that. So I hope you guys learned something new. I hope the audio is amazing. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.